do is also very, very powerful, and it really impacts kids' lives and in in sometimes a much bigger way than you you know you could really imagine. Initially, when I got a call to come to Nickelodeon, I was sort of reluctant to do it because I had been working in long form and I wasn't overly interested in working in series television. So I, I watched a couple episodes of The Legend of Korra, and I was awestruck. The lead character is a female lead with faults and foibles, and I thought, my God, if that's the type of programming that they're working on there, then yeah, I'm in, count me in, I want to be on that show. Female animation characters are much more dynamic than they ever were, because that's always what's been so frustrating to me when I, I like a show and then you get to the girl character and then sometimes I just check out because they have, they felt like a quota. <laughs> Give me that! Ugh. You can't go out there. You're supposed to be patching my board. Patch your own board, make your own lunch, and get a life. And don't call me Sheila. I personally love working on Pinky Malinky because the mom is black. <laughs> Babs is best friend is a little African American yeah. girl, so. I think for me, it's like, oh, I'm seeing myself represented on yeah. these shows that I work on. If there is one thing I hate in this whole entire world, it's haters. I'm gonna find this guy, and I'm gonna pour spaghetti down his favorite white shirt. Justice. You just write a good character. You yeah. just write the story and have the characters live in the world. And if they happen to be female, that's right. great. And I think Nick is a really great place for that. If you ask me, you're just jealous because I'm more feminine and womanly. Do you think right now is a good time for women to be in animation? I think that when reflecting upon the past, like right now is the best time that it's ever been. Yeah. Um, granted, I mean, we have to be real, like there's still so much more progress to be done. Don't you see? If Angelica's ever going to make it in a male-dominated power structure, she's got to eat, breathe, drink, and sweat self-esteem. I remember when I was in college and just starting, um, a compliment was, you draw like a guy. Yeah. Which uh, <laughs> is no longer a thing yeah. that I hear anymore, thankfully. <laughs> yes. I remember coming into one of my first job interviews and uh, when I walked in, he thought I would be a guy because my name was Dana. What a bunch of crap! I am too a girl! Oh, excuse me, young man. I'm a girl! Yeah, I still got the job, and uh, <laughs> that, that it was, you know, a nice surprise. <laughs> so now we're establishing this strong community, this network of women that are ready and willing to support each other. In our outreaching of women, don't want to be exclusive of men. That's super yeah. important to mm -hmm. too, right? Because it's about a balance. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, Doug. Why can't you dig it? I think you go into a show expecting that you're going to be the only woman and, and that you're like, all right, I am carrying the flag. It's nice to be moving um, you know, towards the future, towards a world in which it's not, that that's not the norm. I think I'm just my ideas validated. You know, mm -hmm. in the room, I'm heard and I can say that, well, how I feel about a story or an episode and people say, okay. What I love is that our coworkers are not just people that we work with, but they're also like our cheerleaders yeah. in a way. It's pretty miraculous to see like how much like the studio just empowers people and people to just connect with one another. I can't do any of it. None of it happens without you guys. I think what's really amazing is that, you know, all of our success stories are all empowering each other to just keep doing better. Yeah. You know, people would say like, well, we're in competition with each other, but it's totally not like that at all. I can be of assistance. It's hard, like I, I have a young son who's two, and there's some days where I feel like I don't stop working until like 10 or 11 p.m. and my mind's like racing, and I love knowing that I can do it, um, that I can do it at work, and I can do it at home, and I'm just like doing it no matter what. <laughs> We're put here to hurl ourselves headfirst into this crazy world. And the bruises and scrapes you get along the way, they just mean you're living life. When I'm working for someone like Farnoff, it actually inspires me to do more. They're like, I'm fine just doing my designer position. But when I see someone like that who's gotten into this kind of environment and excelled in it, mm -hmm. it just, I don't know, it just makes me feel like, well, I can go to it. Set your goal, don't stop. Go for it and don't be afraid to fall. You should fall, you should fail, you need to fail. Um, don't take that as a negative. As long as you can learn from it, nothing's negative. Perfect! M-A-M-A! -A.